Okay, welcome back. So I um in between the videos I actually went and reloaded the like the last turn of the last scenario to see if I can get a different hero and I did not. I got the exact same hero. <laughs> so it doesn't work. Um so you can't like hero spam, right? Um Okay, well we got this provocator guy. Um any adjacent units attacking another friendly unit will attack this unit instead. This could be really dangerous. I mean, I can put it on, like, let's say I put it on my tiger. My tiger's gonna run out of ammo eventually, and they're gonna keep attacking him, and then I lose him. I mean, you see what I mean? I mean, it's one of those things where uh, it could be really disastrous, but I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put him on my blue fighter, because I do think there's some value there. We give him Provocator, so if he goes next to a bomber and they go to attack the bomber, of course he's going to intervene and attack the uh, for the bomber, but he would cause them, they, you know, they'd be forced to attack him first. I don't know. I mean, who else would I do it on? I'll definitely take some suggestions in the comments if you guys um, can think of anything. But yeah, so we got a really nice number of prestige. Our core slots opened up a little bit more. So what is it? What are my priorities? I would like to maybe get another artillery. I think another anti-air would be helpful. Um, I like the four tanks. Um, I eventually want them all to be Tiger, of course. Uh, the two recon is important, even though I lost the one. I have to start over. Uh, I think I might want to add a fourth infantry. I mean, I know I have my two Fallschirmjägers. So between all of them, I have five, which is good. Um, it might be nice to have a fourth fighter. Uh, beyond that, I, I'm pretty good. I think so. My next priority might be to get another artillery. But let's get everybody healed up and see how much prestige we have left. Uh, okay, this is... Alright, so here you go. The tiger... Um, was only able to heal up to 14 because I don't have any more prototype points. And that's another thing I'm curious about is let's check out our prototype points. We've already spent two grand of our uh, reinforcements. I'm not happy about that. All right, so we're at about 4,000. So let's see what our prototypes are. So for the infantry, it doesn't look like there's anything new. For the tanks, uh, the 4Gs, of course, are amazing tanks, uh, even without the uh, the Tiger. Um, somebody did write into the comments that the Tiger is considered the Panzer VI, and then the Panther is considered the Panzer V, but the Tiger actually came out first in Africa. I hope I recited the comment correctly. Um, so that's an interesting piece of history because I, I wasn't quite sure. I knew the tiger was higher in the numbers. I mean, and uh, and I knew, so also knew that they did something sort of like we, we did with the Pentium. So, you know, it was the 286, the 386, the 486. I'm talking about computers. And then, uh, and then all of a sudden, the 586 became the Pentium. And, um, and then, you know, and you still hear those terms used today, the Pentium processor. Um, so the Panther was the Pentium for for this, because it went up to Panzer IV, and then the Panzer V was the Panther, and then the Tiger was the Panzer VI. I wasn't aware of that, but thank you to, um, uh, I think it was Hodges. Um, I know I'm not getting your full name correct, but I apologize. I'm going off of memory here. Um, so anyways, um, uh, yeah, I, I find that stuff fascinating, and it's always nice to know. But this, uh, as far as Panzer IVs go, this G is an excellent one. Um, and then you can see we have some captured, but I don't have enough points to make any units. And some of these stink, like this Valentine. Some of these are really old. So no prototype points at all. Uh, let's keep going. The recon looks like it's pretty much the same. The anti-tank, we captured some six-pounder. 
which this is a pretty meaty one. Look at that, 20. That is really nice. Um, but the Martyr 3 H is also nice, and it's motorized, which is even better. Um, now, what's interesting is the Stug 3F8 is just as good, except it, let's see, look at here. This is 18.5, 321, right? Now, if I go to the Stug 3F, I'm getting 21 defense. And then 8 defense versus air. So it's a little bit better on the defense side. Um, but its initiative is a little bit lower. So I don't know if losing one initiative is worth the extra defense. But the, in my opinion, the Stug 3 looks more badass than the Murder 3H. <laughs> but I, I may not do the upgrade. So let's keep going. Anti-air. We got a new one. This one is a 6. Um, 12... 8 and you can still see that the 88 is a 24 for Pete's sakes. Now here's my next question for those of you who are history buffs and know a lot about this. Why was the 88 so much more powerful than these other ones that are apparently coming out in later years? Like why would they make these other units? I mean what's the advantage? That, I mean I understand this is a fully motorized unit whereas this one had to be towed. You know it had to be loaded up on a truck. I mean, were they just hard to make? Is that why there were more of these being produced? But, like, these suck. Um, this only has a 6 against air. I mean, why would you buy that? And um, this one's at least a 12. Um, I'm trying to even see. Like, I guess this one had more ammo. Or more uh, fuel. And ammo. Um... Well, they, they had better defense, ground defense. I mean, if you look at it that way, uh, it had a higher initiative. Its range wasn't even as good. It just, it's really crazy how the 88s were so dang good. But uh, maybe that was something where they didn't realize the 88s were as good as they were. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but anyways, I'm not going to linger on that any longer. All right, so we got the Stu 42, which I think we want to do. Because we have this guy... Who, or we have one of these, the Sig 2, I believe. Because this is like the, the Sig 1B. I know that they gave it a different name. This is the Sig 2, and then this one. It's going to be a lot higher versus tanks and just one lower. But look at its ground defense. It's so much better. All right, we might upgrade to this. Um, this one took four slots. This one only takes three. Uh, this is a pretty nice, the Stu 42, pretty nice. Um, and then, of course, the uh, 17. And just look at that, the, the Mars. Oh, my gosh. It's still quite amazing, that Mars there. But um, the fighters, the FW-190 is going to be our staple for quite a while. I don't think they're going to get an upgrade to that in a long time. Uh, none of those look new. And same there. Okay, so after spending all that time... So we are on the Panzer IV G, and I don't think, yeah, the 3N is nice, but it's not quite as good. Yeah. All right. So we're going to cancel with the tanks. The Tiger, of course, I have no replacement points. And what I want to know is, where did my prototypes go? Oh, I didn't choose the prototype. That's why. See, remember I said I started another campaign? Um, I chose the guy, the, the option where I get prototype points every round. I don't get those now. Okay. That's what part of my problem is. Uh, these guys. Good. The 3H. This is the one. So I think I want to upgrade to this. So you'll see I get more ammo. Um, it takes less slots. It does cost more. Oh range drops to one that's why oh that range really drops no wonder you have to have really high defense with this unit so basically he's a up front and personal artillery dang it i can't do that nope not doing that <clears throat> so my options are to get another fw190 
it's not a bad option. Um, it would take up five slots. That would be all I can do. Uh, the other thing I can do is overstrength my units, which it's not a bad idea. Um, or I could just get more. And when I say get more, I'm talking another artillery or another anti-air. I think that the British in particular seem to have a lot of planes. And you either need more fighters or you need more anti-air. The problem with these anti-air units is, you know, can get a little dicey because you can only move one space. Um, the fact that they can also be an anti-tank is wonderful. Um, getting another artillery would not be bad either. Which is the priority. Um, should I get another artillery? Let's figure this out. He would be six slots, which is exactly what I have. So that's what I'm going to do. Let's get another Mars. Get another Mars bar. Alright, so he has zero experience. That's fine. Um, we still have 3,000 prestige left over. So uh, just for another reminder, I did cheat. I gave myself 90,000, but you can see I'm still... Um, playing within the limits of the rules, although I had a few times last scenario where I let it dip. Um, might have changed the outcome like by a turn. Uh, okay, so we got three objectives down here. And looking closely, this is an anti-air with an airfield. This, of course, it's a hard target. So... In order to take that, I need my anti-tank unit, um, especially the 88s. They're super good against these. Um, the other thing we learned is when you surround them and then you carpet bomb them, you can get their ammo to disappear, so that way they can't fire back. That's a nice way to take out these forts. But I definitely got to take out that fort, and so I will send some units that way. Um, up here, I guarantee you they have a crap ton of units up here that are just hiding outside of the visibility. So let's plan on that. Then of course, sending units up north here. Where's my deployment? I can deploy three armies basically. One to go this way, one to go up the middle. And then these guys are just 100% on, on Russian duty. Okay. Um, well, the Russian duty. Let's do... our Mars unit. Let's give them an anti-air support. An anti-tank. And... our first pioneer. Look, we don't have a... Uh, let's give him the Falsham Jager. Jager. Jager, I think it is, not Jager. But it doesn't matter. I, I used to have Yarmar Jager for the Pittsburgh Penguins, so um, I think I'm going to be stuck with that. Um, so I'm going to give them the two Falsham Jagers, because as you can see, there's not a lot of walking you need to do, right? So I don't necessarily need the transport. Although, I mean, I'm going to move this one to that side and he's gonna go up this way okay um am I gonna give them a tank you know what I can afford one of them so let's do that where are the planes gonna go good question now if I put them all up north here I just think it's overkill against Russia but maybe it's not I'm going to put one fighter down here, one of the bombers, and the guy who can fast rebase down south. Everybody else, though, I'm going to go up north. And 
this guy. I'm going to put him down here. I'm going to put both of the strategic bombers down south. Okay, so for the middle run, um, we're going to definitely use the SIG-2. Um, I'm going to put one of my recon. Two of my tanks. Um, one of my infantry. Yeah, and that's it. And then for uh, down south here, I'm going to get a Mars bar, an anti air. Our pioneer plus the other infantry. You know what? I probably should put the other infantry on this side. Uh, anti tank, the tiger, and our recon. So it's probably overkill, but I think this is going to be a tough battle down south here. And, um, yeah. That's enough. Uh, one thing I also noticed is see how I have like all these traits? I guess the allies in the Soviet Union could have traits too. I never realized that. Uh, we are in cloudy weather. So our planes aren't going to be quite as powerful. Let's end the deployment. This is my Tiger, so I'm going to say yes. And off we go. We get 310 a turn. Ooh. That means this is going to be a tough battle. <laughs> That's usually what that means. Um, okay, so I don't have a recon up here, but what I'm going to do is just march my infantry as far forward as I can. And then my artillery is going to just move up and support that particular infantry. So what do you think that... Why is that in red? Oh, it's in red because it's... Russia instead of because they're they have red numbers whereas <coughs> this is green numbers I never realized that okay so boom suppress four uh, I'm gonna move the tank up a little bit more be a little bit more bold and then the anti tanks gonna sit behind him <coughs> Um, as far as fighters go, you can see they have a fighter sitting right here. Let me zoom in a little bit more. Um, should I take the bait? Eh, why not? Is that guy experienced or what? He seemed to do really well. A Yak-7, huh? Um, oh look, you got these infantry up in the mountains here. I'm going to fly over that zone to attack him, which was successful. You can see there's a bomber there, but what I'm going to do, why I did that is because I have a bomber here and I want to hit this tank. And I can do so with the um, protection of my blue fighter, who has the provocator. Um, now this, of course, is anti-air which I will leave an anti-air, and I'm going to just move right to here so he can protect all my units. Um, I'm feeling okay. Uh, I want to see what he does. I mean, if he starts going this way, I'm going to get a little annoyed, but we can swing back down with our tank and finish him off if we have to. Now we got down here. Um, I do have a recon, so let's go up and see what's going on here. Uh, there's an airbase there with a plane. Can't do anything about the plane. Um, my unit can't walk far enough. So all I can do is go up and just stop here. And then of course support with artillery. The recon can't swing around. And of course I have two tanks which don't look like they're gonna... Like if I try to attack with them it's not gonna look good. Um, at least got him encircled. 
Now, what I could do is come up here and bomb, but as you can see, that fighter's in the way. So let's use my fighter unit, maybe, and nope, I'm not going to do much damage to him at all. With these... That's a Spitfire. That seems to be awesome all of a sudden. Um, it does have two and a half stars, I guess. So yeah. Hmm. He would do... He would take a damage and then do two suppression. Take a damage or kill two. That one would take two damage. Oh, look at this. We got another fort. Dang it. Um, well, I guess we know what my artillery is going after. Ooh, that was really well done. That fort's nothing. Plus one to close defense. I'll take that. That's really good, actually. Oh, come on. That fort stayed alive. There we go. I don't want to get too aggressive with this tank. But I'll move to here. I got a recon. I should have moved him first. So there's another fighter. And then, yeah, I want to get my anti-air right. Nope, I don't. Well, I sort of do. To protect my tiger. The, the thing I'm concerned about is I'm too far away to protect this. Oh, I can move him up. There we go. We're going to move him up. So now I'm protecting... Because they're definitely going to go after my artillery and my tank, and now I got both of them protected. All right, so I have these guys. There's a fighter unit down here. There's anti-air units down here. It would be nice to... Yeah, I'll go up and do this. All we did was suppress once. Sure, it's gonna hurt my tank. Ooh. My dog's freaking out. She must be as excited as I am. Oh, somebody just came in the door. <laughs> okay. All right, there we go. That was a well done plan. Now, I would love to move up to see what's at this next spot, but I have nobody else left to move. So I'm just going to stay here. And then this plane won't be able to attack us because he'll have no choice but to relocate. So that plane is out for the next round. I only have to worry about this one down here, and then the Russian fighter up above, and then of course any other ones that are hidden, like back here. Um, I do have two bombers left, but I don't necessarily, like I can come out and maybe damage some stuff, but I guarantee you a fighter is going to nail them, and then I'm going to have to pay a big repair bill. I don't know if I want to do that. So I'm going to keep my bombers back for now, and... Hopefully they won't know they're there, so they won't come after them. Besides, it's cloudy anyways. So, let's go ahead and hit end turn and see how bad I did. That plane had to relocate. There's a tank coming in. There's a lot of planes. Oh my gosh. One, two, three, four. That's what I was expecting. I wasn't expecting infantry to just bum rush a, a tank like that. Um, well, okay, so as you can see here, they move back all their planes. Now that just means that next round they can attack down here or anywhere, um, really. Uh, I'm going to move up and take this because it's free. And as you can see, we're on the verge of even coming up and taking that, but not quite. So I think I'm going to come back and just stop there. My artillery, of course, can only move so far. So I will move up and suppress him a little. 
this should be an overrun. It is. I'm going to move up and take the high ground. There's a recon there. This guy is going to repair. Ooh, 329, but we'll take it. And this guy... I'm going to go up because he can deploy there. And I can't do anything with that. So this, these middle units are advancing really fast, and they're my weakest army of, all, of the three armies that are out here. They're my weakest. So um, now I made them the weakest because I thought that they would advance pretty fast, but this is even faster than I was expecting. And look at this, 10-4. And that's an artillery. Can't reach him with this guy. I can definitely reach him with one of these. Yeah, the Russians have all kinds of troops up here. I'm gonna go ahead, advance. Odds did not improve there. Um, I could... Nope. I'm going to worry more about up here. Still very bad odds. I wanted to attack and then move. I was stupid there. It wasn't very smart. I can hit one of these tanks. So, like... So here's the thing, that anti-tank unit's going to be a problem if my tank units advance. Um, obviously their tank units are looking pretty tough here. They're KB-1s, so those are heavy tanks there. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and damage this KB-1. And one of the largest reasons is because this fighter can come up and damage the other one. There's no anti-air units up here, so this is good. Now this particular fighter, I think I have no choice but to protect my bombers here, so I'm going to do that. And then this tank, oh my gosh, minus seven! Just because he's on the high ground? Minus seven? Are they some kind of elite unit or what are they? They're the guard units. Um, you receive plus one sprouting, range units get plus one range, melee units get plus 10% accuracy, and we get minus 10%. Hmm. Well, he's no longer uh, going to have advantage there. And I'll just go up. Oh, come on, I suppressed him. <laughs> I thought I was at least going to finish him off. Alright, I would love to do, like, I could go here and do anti-air, but I got those guys covered with the uh, fighters. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch him to anti-tank and move up. here. Protect my infantry from their tanks. Okay. Oh, I got a fighter unit down here. Yeah. So that would be to help out down here. I have a fighter and a bomber still. So, what can I do? Well, you can see there I can hit this anti-air unit for five damage. And then this is a uh, light cruiser. Ugh. So we got a navy unit down here. It's gonna harass us. This guy, I could advance one space and wreck his fighter. Which I will do. And this guy's gonna come in and try to hurt him some more. And my bomber. Can I hit that naval unit? I can, but I'm going to get hit hard. It's 
because of this still. So I could move all the way, but then I'm at risk of getting attacked by this unit here. So let's do this. And of course, that's an overrun. I'm going to take the airfield. So their fighter will have to relocate. My bomber. So you would just do one damage now. Well, let's start uh, removing their entrenchment. That's all he did. This is the Wehrmont, the Vermont Pioneers. And of course, I can do more with him, but there's nothing to do. So I'm not. Um, I think. Yep. Then next turn, we're going to get sunny weather, which means our planes will finally be at full strength. So. Yep, he's relocating. He came in and then realized he was going to get ruined, so he stopped. Ambush. Oh, you gotta love that. Oh my gosh. So here's the trick. I took this with my recon unit and then of course retreated. And then uh, once there was no visibility in this area anymore, I moved troops in. It does uh, trick the AI. The AI really does have a fog of war. Um, I'm very impressed by that. So you can take advantage of that quite a bit. Okay, so I did take some damage with him. I think I'm going to repair just because I don't want to lose my units. And their air units are still very powerful. But this guy, as you know... Oh my gosh, that was beast mode right there. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna, we got five suppressed. It's down to four entrenchment. Oh, I got my pioneer units. Oh no, this jerk. Can't hit him with a tank. Can only hit him with infantry. Uh, oh, I have these guys back. That would take four damage. Those like cruisers are pretty powerful. Oh, it's the fighter. There's a fighter here. That's what's going on. Uh, and that's pretty impressive. You can actually undo a battle if you wanted. So I sort of like that. All right, I'm going to go ahead and I think all he's going to do is oh, he killed one. So he got ruined. And I can come in and either finish off the infantry. Yeah, we're going to finish off the infantry. Um, and yeah, let's start encircling this thing. And that means one of these should come help out with that. And it's not quite encircling. But we gained a star, which is good. All right, well, I can try to hit that ship um, or we can just ignore the ship because the ship is really not going to do much to us 
Let's ignore the ship. And this guy can still move. So if I move to here, I got him encircled finally. So he won't be able to resupply. But of course he's in a transport, which is always a problem. Um, and look at that. There's a freaking tank right there. Dang it. I'm going to get ruined. Uh, I need to reload. Sorry. I gotta do this a little differently. Um, now one of the things that stinks is I actually took him out for 10 damage. But I'm actually... I want to hit this guy over here instead. So... Yeah, my pioneers are still gonna... And... He didn't retreat. Which is... Fine. do that instead. Here we can take the location. Oh, there we go. I get to the other side with my recon. Not quite as ideal, but I can still get him encircled. Like so. Alright, so the idea now is... I'm going to move the artillery up, position him to protect most of my units. This guy, I'm going to move one space forward, and see, I can hit him now. I don't quite do the full 10 damage like I did last time, which was impressive, but what that does allow me to do is I can come in with my fighter and be parked next to the ship. And at least finish him off and then now this guy who does the lethal attack can damage that ship without any retaliation that is what I wanted to do and then of course my pioneer units can move up and unload them and I am at risk of getting attacked by the fighter but we do need to do this, because he's encircled. And that takes away four of his ammo. So, uh, I can only attack him with these two units, but I'm going to go ahead and attack him with my Tiger. I did take one damage. And remember, every damage I take, I can't replace. Um, this guy, of course, is far away from the units he's protecting, so it's a problem. But he did his job. We took out a plane. I do have a bomber, which I'm going to go ahead and replace. Now, this middle area, as you know, this these guys here, there's a whole bunch of them in this area here. Um, that's a... Oh, I'm just going to move forward and attack the artillery. Boom! Okay, the issue though is I'm now encircled, so we'll hit that for two, I'll move forward. I got all kinds of things I can wreck here, and I actually think I should. It's an anti-tank, it's an M3 Lee, and a Sherman. The Sherman, of course, being the better of the three, where I can hit him, which I am concerned about, because he's going to move up and attack my artillery. So, yeah, I'm going to attack him, and then with my fighters, I think we're just going to look at this guy hiding behind the rocks there. There are so many targets up here. I needed a bigger army up north. 
Um, so that means I do need to move up. I need to move up fast. So... This, of course, is an infantry unit. Um, I don't want to go next to that fort and just let him attack me, so I will advance like so. That part's fine. And then with these guys, I mean, I can obviously start hitting there, but I actually want to get my artillery in place and hold out over here. This is a tank unit. So we can come up and wreck him. Up on high ground, too. Obviously, we have a recon. Finish him off. This. Now, the reason this is a problem is because that jerk right there is an anti tank. So we can. Just go up and take the high ground, or I can go over here and help out with that fort. They're both good options. The high ground, of course, would protect my artillery, which I think they is vulnerable. This guy's vulnerable too. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that, and just take the high ground. After all, I've, if you've watched Star Wars, as Obi Wan Kenobi taught us, when you have the high ground, you win. Um, I was fully expecting these tanks to move, but they didn't. So we'll just continue our slow creep forward. Continue that. I want to stay in anti-tank mode because the planes aren't coming up here. I didn't do that because I wanted to do the overrun. My apologies on that part. I was doing that because I wanted to move him further. <laughs> um, I'm thinking of coming back down here uh, for air support, but actually, I'll just do this. And yes, I know I can take that location, but it's not the cream prize. This guy should be... Well, look at this. He's staying in anti-tank mode. There was a patch that just got updated today, patch number one. I wonder if this was one of the things in their fix. I should go check. But that's awesome. Look, he's still in anti-tank mode after I used the transport. Very good. Because um, as you know, I was intentionally not going into transport mode because I didn't want him to s switch back to anti-air. That's, um, that's better. I think it's better that they stay in the mode that they were originally in. <clears throat> um, okay, I'm concerned about him. I'm not concerned about him. I am concerned about him. I'm concerned a little bit about him. I think this guy's going to move forward and attack. Um, he did everything down here. He's going to get hit as well. So let's see what happens. that I was expecting. Oh, I was not expecting that. Wasn't expecting that either. I don't think they made a good choice there. Uh, I survived that surprisingly well. That was a lot of damage. Okay. I will take that. That was a good... It could have been much, much worse. I was not expecting this. Um, and he did take some significant damage. I wasn't expecting that I would also take... I mean, I have no choice but to repair. In fact, it's not even a full repair. 
but of course I need to move up and I had the high ground which is good I can go and do a damage to him or ooh, you know why that that won't work because of this jerk and yeah so I might as well just take the territory do that and the thing that hurts is I can't just move him one space forward but I'm gonna go ahead and do this and sure enough he stayed in the anti-tank mode awesome this part surprises me a little, but I'm going to take advantage of it. I don't think he's encircled anymore. Um, I do have planes that need to help this situation, and he's an anti-tank, so we're going to hurt him bad. I have two fighters. I definitely hurt up here, which is good. I think I need to help here. If anything, I'm just going to protect my bomber. And then this guy, he might come up and help. And actually, this is the best help right here. Take that. And what is he? He's an anti tank. Another one. Alright, so for sure, I know he's in the high ground, but I'm going to pounce him back and take the high ground myself. I would like to move forward to support my infantry but I'm worried about him. So I'm gonna actually take the high ground. Give myself some more range. I got an artillery here, perfectly suited for that. Um, obviously that's a problem. And I'm gonna move my artillery over to support him. And you can see they got a crap ton of planes there. We're going to go ahead and get started on... Oh, we go. Plus one close defense. Always like that. Um, so the close combat skill is where? Here. That's close defense. So it's interesting. He has a zero close defense, but a one if, it's a, if he's in the transport. That must explain why those transports cost so much. So I think his close attack, I don't think they have it. Let's see what it says. When it's being shot at from short distance, in this situation, enemy can exploit any weak spots in units protection. It's much less than ground defense in close terrain like cities, forests, and mountains. Infantry always shoot against the opponent's close defense rating. Infantry is especially dangerous in close terrain. Close defense is used if the unit is ambushed by the enemy. There you go, close combat. Has access to enemy units close defense rating when fighting. All right, so I think you use your 11 here, the soft attack of 11, but it'll be against the close defense of zero instead of the usual eight. Interesting, okay. fully expected that overrun. This should be an overrun. It is. And this is the Sherman. Let's make sure our planes have all their assignments before we continue up there. Because you can see here I have a bomber. And there's not much to bomb down here. So if I can reach in one space away. Look at that. Can I rebase somewhere? Yes. I'm going to rebase Closer. This guy took some damage. Uh, I would like to go there, but you can see all those fighters around. I bet I can do. Yep, I can do four damage against that ship. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. All right. So if I move just one space, I can't do anything against those planes. So, if I can take that airfield, though, 
their planes have to all move next turn and they won't be able to attack. So that's my goal, is to take that airfield. So how do I do that though? This guy is five suppressed and he's just a, he's a P-40. So that's an American, but apparently a, a British. Yeah, it's a Lend-Lease Act, exactly. So, if I come across, I can hit it. Yeah, see, the Kitty Hawk can't even hurt me. So I'm going to do that. And we did two damage, two suppression. That's good. This, one of these guys is my Pioneer. So I'm going to go ahead and wreck this. And I'm going to position myself to take on the next guy with the Pioneer, and he'll get wrecked next turn. My um, recon unit can just move down, take territory, and we can move up for encirclement purposes. And yeah, let's go up with our... Oh, it's this anti-tank unit that's the problem. Well, the king... or the tiger... Oh. There we go. I got him to retreat. That's what I needed. The infantry can't do anything. I could go backwards and try to hit this ship. I don't know how important that is. I want to keep moving forward. There. Now all those planes have to relocate next turn. And this guy is a problem because he's anti-tank. So I'm just going to move up in support. And then this guy, I'm going to go ahead and repair. Um, oh, I have an artillery left. Didn't even think about that. I'm going to go ahead and suppress him so he doesn't hurt my pioneers. And yeah, we'll move him all the way up and put him tauntingly right underneath their fighter unit. And then we're just going to moon him as he flies by with no ammo or ability to attack us. Um, I do have a fighter left. So I could try to take out that kitty hawk, which is not a bad idea, actually. Or I can rebase further north. I think when you get a chance to take something, you do it. So there we go. That Kitty Hawk's in bad, bad shape. So it's going to take him two turns to heal, because this next turn is just going to be a move. Alright, so now, yeah, we got these guys. That's the M3 Lee. He's not quite as powerful. And then we got the Sherman. So we're going to go after the Sherman. Get him encircled. And go up. And of course he runs away. I'm going to attack the lead with my... I'm still going to encircle that Sherman. Um, we made short work of these units, which is good. So now... Oh yeah, I got this guy. Yeah, that's a perfect move right there. There they go. Bye-bye. I don't know. Oh. That worked out well. This one may not. That one was fine. That's interesting. Why did the tanks turn like that? That's fine. 
So now you can see these are two anti-tank units. So um, they're a big problem for me because I can't come in with my armored units to uh, take them out. So I definitely want to bomb them, especially this one. So we took out six. We suppressed one. And he's actually suppressed two, if you can see down there. Um, so two of the three are suppressed. So I don't think he's going to be very effective. And then the rest is just the rest. Um, my bigger issue is that I couldn't go up there with one of my heavy bombers. Um, I can't help these guys here and here because, as you can see, all the Russian planes are around. So... I have to take this fort out the manual way. I do have this bomber here, which can definitely make short work of one of those. Um, but I'm getting precariously close to all these fighters that are over here. So I think what I want to do... Being able to take out five of those is pretty nice. I'm gonna do that. And then this guy who's not as strong. Their their ship is somewhere in here, we just don't know where. So I'm gonna actually come back with my recon. So there we go. The ship moved. I want to take their ship out too far but this guy can rebase for free so we're gonna rebase there and attack the ship and he's got one health left this is the pioneer so I don't even need to soften these guys up and I can move my recon in and boom there's another 150 Got some anti tank units. I'm gonna go ahead and attack their anti tank. This should be clean up. And four damage, and then this should. It's not enough to finish them off, though. That's crazy. Um, <coughs> so we'll go ahead and move our infantry up. This, of course, being our anti-air. Now, if I move him here, they're going to see me because of this tank's visibility. Ooh, let's do it. Oh, that got, we got so lucky, folks. So moving that up. Uh, oh, I can move him up. I will. And then, yeah, I'm going to do full movement. Uh, no, I'm not. Yeah, I am. No, I'm not. Do that. Okay, the bottom is looking good. And we got this guy still. Who's going to help out here? Because that unit, I have to eliminate this unit before I can move on confidently. See, and he's still... Hey, Josh, did you deal with the fact that the Russians the numbers are red and so it blends into their background of being red it's so like when you suppress them and their number turns red yeah I can't even tell what that number is I mean I know it's a one but you can barely see it okay um And then this fighter, oh, I can't get there. So we're going to rebase him. 
So I need to finish this guy off, and there it is. And not only that, but I'm protecting my bomber as well. And then this other bomber, not sure what I can do there. I'm gonna move that infantry forward, and then this artillery forward, so we're in position. This should be an easy win. I can't tell what that number is. It's a three. All right, so that should finish him. No. That was my full attack too. I'm gonna move up. That was an overrun. This won't be an overrun. But, with him moving forward like that, that allows me to move my fighter in. And if I get lucky, I can... Oh, I didn't get lucky, but I still got him down to just one health. And I'm not going to be able to do anything there. Yeah. I'm still going to retreat my recon just because... That was a good run. There we go. He can still move. So I think I'm going to do this so they won't attack my uh, artillery over here. The artillery, of course, is going to keep weakening this. 2-2. Two, 3-1, two. I'll take it. Um... This situation is weird. I would like to use the infantry to take out those guys. Good, we got an overrun. I could overrun this. Not a bad idea. Do that. And then I can still even replenish my troops, which is very interesting. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Now as far as anti-tank goes. I'm gonna move my infantry this way. That. I am tempted to flip him to anti-air, largely because I think these units are going to wake up. But um, anti-tank mode is the way to go with this guy. So I'll just advance him like that. So we got... They can't sneak around the top. That's for certain. I don't know what these planes are waiting for, but... Um, Happy they haven't moved yet. I'm just now noticing this little red like line that's going straight to the ground. I wonder what that means. Does mine do that? Oh yeah, they do. Right there. Oh, it's just showing what hex they're in. In case you're confused. Okay. I don't know why I didn't notice that <laughs> prior to now. <coughs> okay, um, a little nervous about a few spots, but let's give it a go. Yep, there's one. Was too bad. All those fighters I I made move. Now they're showing up. Okay, that guy I'm worried about now. I'm worried about both of them. That's why I wanted to go to anti-air mode. Okay, very nervous now. I can't do that. I'm gonna lose. than I thought. 
I really... I'm actually gonna take an airport. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That wasn't good, folks. That wasn't good. All right. Let's redo this turn. As much as I would like to take those guys down, I know I can't. So I'm going to go ahead and replenish everywhere I can. Flip him to anti-air mode. I'm not doing anything with him. I might as well do that. Okay, so I gotta just assume that they're gonna be coming all out with their uh, with their planes this turn. So we're gonna take him and go here. And there's three left. Bomber, but it doesn't kill the guy. That's the issue. This guy needs to rebase. And I think it was here. But we did this. day. Oh, he moved up onto there? <sighs> Jerk. Well, that was good. We got some Churchill MK2 equipment, but only two of them. coming for us over here. I think we've completely eliminated them from this side. Uh, other than that ship, of course. But um, when we made them retreat, they, they retreated all the way back to this airfield, and of course they're coming over to ruin us over here. So I'm going to still try to... damage, which wasn't good. This guy's available to ruin somebody, so we're going to stay back. And we have this guy that can help. Again, we have to worry about the fighters. And the issue is, this fighter can't, re can't reach so I gotta rebase him. I think even though I wanna use him, I gotta rebase him. Could go there. <clears throat> Can't go up there yet. Or I could go here. This might not be a bad idea. Let's go. Oh, let's go over here. My logic in that is, I think I'm going to be able to take this soon. Also, 
all these planes here are going up there. This guy, of course, we got bombed last time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move him out of the way. And see, I can move freely, so I'm going to just retreat. So that way I don't take as much damage. Overrun him. And we got the T-34, of course, is up on the higher ground. But we can hit the Sherman here for some decent damage. And then I'm just going to retreat and take the high ground. Here. Man, I only did one damage. And I think I need to take the high ground to defend myself. Obviously, um... And then I'm going to put my fighter here to protect him from a bomber. Um, this guy is a problem, because now he can march this way. But he did retreat, so he shouldn't have as many movement points. And I think we're... Oh, i got to protect him. See, now if I move him here, I think I'm in trouble. But let's do it anyways. There wasn't much else to move him to. Alright, see if this is a little better. The fact that he knew he was there is a little troubling. That's troubling. Even more troubling. We are surviving, and the fact that I ambushed him is a little surprising. Okay, I'm down to six. Finish him off. This guy needs a repair, for sure. This. Done. I'll even move him up one. Obviously, I need to anti-air these guys down here, but I hope you can see that I have juicier priorities here. I do have the two fighters. There are so many targets. Um, let's go after this one. This guy needs a repair. We're gonna go up and try again. We have a fighter here, and look at all these bombers I can go after. I'm gonna go after this one because then I'm protecting my artillery there. There's just so many. I do need to move out of the way with him so I can go into anti-tank mode and take care of him. And then, of course, Bomber that cannot get all the way up there. My challenge is 
whoever I attack, I of course will do some nice damage to them. But they're gonna come after me with all their fighters. So I feel like I can't do anything with them. But what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go this way. Because we have this jerk over here. I'm gonna rebase here for free. And then let's finish him off. No. They got two units over there. So this is my pioneer unit. I'm gonna keep moving forward with him, and then the Vermont. I gotta back up and go there. And I think I have to stay behind. Where are there? That's it. Commando units, huh? Let's keep moving forward. I can go all... Oh no! Good thing I at least deployed. So now the reason I'm going to take damage is because of that jerk in the back. My infantry is going to get hit pretty hard. That or I have to be willing to lose another tiger. our star. We're up to four. Uh, okay. Um, it's interesting how they're still being a huge thorn. Um, that's right. I can still move with him. That guy's our problem. So if I move him up, And of course, I can't do anything to attack, but I can at least. He's an issue. They're gonna come and bomb him again. And then they might actually go after him. I have a lot of concerns hitting in turn here. We may have to redo this turn. Alright, that I wasn't expecting. That's a weird Oh, because they're moving forward with their infantry. Those are my pioneers getting rocked. I see, now it's Russia's turn, so now they're going. I'm just sitting here, like, biting my fingernails, watching this. Well, I survived it. Um, okay, well, first things first, anti-air mode. That's the 26th A, so that's an A20. And a Tupolev. I think we'll go for the A20. Boom. 
took out one of those nasty planes. Obviously, these guys are a problem. Replenish with him. And then we're going to come up with our tank. Overran him. And you're going to wish you went. You didn't come. Now, obviously, he's still a problem, but we've killed everybody around him, so. one more then I'm gonna move him just one space away from that anti-tank this guy of course is coming up to help but I'm just gonna have to replenish with him and I'm replenishing with him we do have the ability to come up and bomb some good stuff up here. But if I do, I need a fighter escort, so I need to think about this. If I can take this airfield up here, all those Russian planes have to move away. In fact, they might even die. Nope, there's an airport up here and there. But I would force them to move. The problem is, is this guy is in trouble. Artillery is sort of in trouble as well. If I go ahead and just replenish. I'm losing a lot of prestige right now. And then we don't know where the frick that ship went. There he is. So now I'm going to come back up. Recon is at least good against those guys. And let's kill this ship already. I'm not even sure that was worth it, but... Alright, so yes, this is going to be worth it. I need to hit these guys hard. Now, that does mean, though, that they're probably going to come up and hit me with some uh, fighters. to relieve our infantry who were surrounded. And I move the anti-tank up. Two damage, one damage. Let's see if we can destroy him. Not quite. And yes, we're gonna leave this guy in anti-air mode. Or will we? Yeah, we will. Right there. So we're gonna protect. He's vulnerable. Now, I am low on ammo, but I could go back and take the high ground and I will. you're a gnat. And I gotta use my infantry to clean these guys out. So we got rid of one of them. That's good. Alright. So we have a fighter unit here. I can come over. Oh yeah. Perfect. Let's go over, damage one of these tanks, and then protect my bomber. Done. Two fighter units here. We can go up and try to wreck that guy. Or all these bombers that have been harassing me. Yep, I'm gonna do that because that'll help protect my artillery. And then I, I think I'm gonna come up and attack these tanks that you see here. So I'm gonna come up with my fighter to protect those areas. So for example, coming up with this tank, like so, finish him off. No, I'm not, dang it. It's just three, two, holy cow. Three, 
zero. And go up and take that airfield. That'd sort of be funny. And then what can he do? He can damage that tank. He can damage him. I am susceptible to air oh right there. Boom. Look at all those planes. Alright, that was a good outcome. that up. Could have been worse. It's getting worse. Yeah, I was worried about that. Oh, I'm gonna lose that recon. I'm gonna have to reload. Oh, because that stupid recon. Alright, I'm going to finish redoing this turn and uh, stop recording and I'll start it back up as soon as I'm caught back up. <laughs>